Uh, I'm Dushanka Krajinovic from Belgrade University, School, Faculty of Pharmacy. I am uh, head of department for social pharmacy and pharmaceutical legislation, uh, and I teach uh, pharmacy practice, uh, pharmacy ethics and pharmacy law, and also introduction to pharmacy. These are important fields in social pharmacy that we introduce to our students at the beginning of their study of pharmacy. Here I had a chance to exchange the knowledge and information with my colleagues from Lithuania and I'm very grateful for the invitation to be able to uh, give lectures to Lithuanian students to know the functioning and to know how the uh, Lithuanian pharmacy system functions and also to exchange their experience with the International Congress uh, con colleagues because I um, was participating in a very important and interesting international conference of pharmacy practice. So uh, my stay here is done under the uh, Erasmus Plus exchange program for teachers and mobility for teachers and I'm very grateful for the invitation to uh, the Dean of the Faculty of Pharmacy, Lithuanian University for Health Sciences. I'm very grateful to the professors uh, and uh, lecturers that uh, invited me to be here. Professor Ramona, the Dean of the Faculty of Pharmacy at Lithuanian University for Health Sciences, then uh, Professor Jurgita who organizes the Conference for Pharmacy Practice, also Professor Jurga that is the head of the Department for uh, Drug Technology and Social Pharmacy and also the Cent Vilma Gudine who is uh, uh, also uh, at the Department at, at the Museum for History, Lithuanian History of uh, Medicine and Pharmacy. Uh, so it was a great chance for me to, as I said, to exchange experience and to get to know how the Lithuanian pharmacy systems works. And what, we, what I can say, uh, there are many similarities to uh, pharmacy practice uh, practiced here in Lithuania and in other Baltic uh, countries as uh, uh, pharmacy practice that are done in my country, in Serbia. We are a country of a population of 7 million and we have uh, many uh, healthcare workers. Uh, pharmacists are one of healthcare workers. Um, they work at community pharmacy, at hospital pharmacy, uh, and also at private pharmacies. So we would have a health system that are based on primary, secondary, and tertiary level, uh, consisted of uh, health, public, uh, health institution, then private health institution, and also private uh, businesses, health businesses. And pharmacists are very important in delivering pharmaceutical care for patients in all these settings. So it is their responsibility and their social duty to care for patient in terms of pharmacotherapy. So to see that they are all the patients need concerning medicines are met, meaning that they should um, take great responsibility in pharmacotherapy and also the outcomes of the pharmacotherapy. So it would be not just dispensing, but also counseling patient, monitoring the drug, monitoring the outcomes, clinical outcomes, economic and also social outcomes. So we want to see how our patients are doing, how they are taking their medicine, what's the level of adherence. We want to know uh, their uh, concerns or their questions about medicine. We want to check how they are combining different medicines. For example, if we have a patient with a 10 different medication, how it is combined, how it is put in a daily dosage regime. So pharmacists would all need to do all these things for the patient. So the, the, these are uh, important tasks for the pharmacists uh, in Serbia as it is in Lithuania or any other European country. So I would say that there are much similarities to the system, how the system works when it comes to the patient. There are differences concerning the reimbursement system for the drug, drug prices. So th these are different things. But concerning the patient pharmaceutical care, I think the system is very, very similar. Also, pharmacists work with uh, pharmacy technicians. They are um, uh, important, they work in pair, and it is same in Lithuania. So um, it's very important to educate pharmacy technician as well, and to make them also competent for this logistic and technical um, works that they do in pharmacies so that pharmacists can perform 
clinical, so to speak, clinical services and clinical work, to have more time to do clinical work. Um, in Serbia, it is not divided so strictly, so pharmacists will do also logistic work and clinical work, but we tend to divide it slowly so that pharmacists would have more time to do clinical work, as pharmacy technician would have more time to do uh, technical and logistical work at our pharmacies. Pharmacies uh, should be licensed and uh, in Serbia there is a pharmaceutical chamber, it is a regulatory body, it licenses all pharmacies that work at healthcare, so you should be licensed either as a pharmacy technician or a pharmacist. Upon uh, licensing you will ha have to pass an oath, a pharmacy oath, and you will have to sign that you will oblige the code of ethics and different ethical norms that are important also for practice. So this is uh, uh, for building professionalism and for enhancing professionalism of our colleague. Uh, pharmacists would also uh, do continual education, so they will uh, develop uh, as the process go. As uh, practitioners, they need to be fit to practice, so to to um, enhance their competencies, clinical competencies, uh, organizational, personal competencies, and they have to provide the evidence that they do. So every seven years, they are relicensing themselves, and um, in that period, they must uh, perform. Uh, continue education, so they must learn formal education, informal education, uh, and sometimes they they can uh, make their portfolio so that they can present the evidence that they did it. And the pharmaceutical chamber will relicense them um, only when they see the evidence that they had a continuous education. Continuous education is provided for pharmacists at faculty of pharmacy, also at different um, educational institutions, but it should be uh, specific for the skills and knowledge for the pharmacy and it should be in many different areas and specialities for pharmacy practice. It should be in clinical pharmacy, in hospital pharmacy, then in area of communication which is important for uh, all healthcare professionals, then for compounding, for pharmacognosy, from uh, food sciences, for dietary supplements, different things. Um, toxicology, chemistry and cosmetology, so uh, different things that are uh, that are needed for pharmacists to be competent and up-to-date, so to perform practice with patient uh, on a regular basis. And many of these courses are offered jointly, so the faculty of pharmacy would offer it together with the pharmaceutical chamber and different institutions and organizations, because of, besides pharmaceutical chamber, there are many organizations in Serbia that um, are uh, professional organization, for example, organization for hospital pharmacy, organization for community pharmacy. Clinical pharmacy is something new in our practice. We are still developing it. We have few colleagues, hospital pharmacies, that are performing clinical pharmacy at hospitals as well. We would like to develop it further. We had the chance here at the conference to hear the experience from United Kingdom and uh, these are the models which we would like to follow in the future. But it will take a lot of time to change the practice because the practice differ um, and uh, we would like to, to, to take these steps and to follow um, these examples because I think they are good for the benefit of the patient and for the patient safety. Because patient safety is the main issue, I mean this is a, um, um, a focus, this is the essence of our profession. So we deliver care, we deliver service, uh, bearing in mind that the patient issue is a first, because our first ethical principle is do not harm, primum non nocere. So if we follow the ethical rules, it would be a duty to care and duty not to harm. So our practice should be safe for the patient. And uh, this is also that uh, all international organizations such as WHO, FIP, also recognize for the pharmacist to be a professional health professionals that care for the pa benefit of the patient and also for the patient safety. So we are trying all our activities and when we are teaching the, our students this motto, these uh, things are very, very important. And also at Belgrade University Faculty of Pharmacy, we are trying to teach them professionalism from the first day they enter our faculty. We are teaching them how to communicate and we are trying to impose the social role that pharmacy has uh, because we think it's important for them to know what are their social roles, what would be the 
the expectation of a society from a pharmacy so that when they finish and they have all the knowledge and skills and competency that they can fit to the practice more easily and they can um, become a competent and self-confidence in what they do uh, very very quickly uh, when they are in the practice and also we have an experiential education so our students will go six months into the practice six months in the last semester of the fifth year because our course is integrated master course as it is here in Lithuania. So a pharmacist will be in a practice with the uh, mentors, with the preceptors in the final semester and they will do clinical work with the patient which is a valuable experience for them they will build the professionalism they will have the knowledge they will build the competency and when they have the diploma they go extra six months into internship so after that they get the license and they are really ready to to take their job into their hands. So I think it's important um, to have these clinical subjects and to have this sense for a pharmacy student to, to be able to perform something for the patient. Of course, this is under the supervision of a mentor, of a preceptor. Uh, students are not independent to do, they are, uh, they are supervised, but it's a very, very important experience for them. And I know that they have the same experience here, which is, which is also, um, uh, which is requirements for the AO directive for the pharmacist as a regular regulated profession but um, we are developing this experience uh, for long for short period so it's new for us and the exchange of idea with the Lithuanian colleague was very valuable also we we just recently um, finished the project Erasmus plus project in Belgrade University uh, and it was a project about enhancing capacities for all health care professionals not just for pharmacists, but the doctors, nursing, and also uh, stomatologists, dentistries, to um, experiential education, because it's something for the pharmacy, it's something new for the doctors and dentistry. It is not new in Serbia, uh, but also there are uh, much place for much space for uh, for improvements. So. Um, I think that I learned a lot from the experience that you have in clinical placements in pharmacy here at Lithuania that I would be able to um, to present to my colleagues in Belgrade University Faculty of Pharmacy and that we can um, maybe develop future cooperation uh, based on this ex uh, experience exchange. So uh, this stay in Lithuania was very, very um, important for us in many, in many ways. Um, how do I see that pharmacy practice will develop in the future? Uh, well, um, probably pharmacy practice will become more clinical. As pharmacists, we be clinicians. So cl when I say clinical, meaning that they deal with patient, that they perform directly for the patient, with the patient. Uh, but uh, it will also need uh, lots of changes for the curriculum, for the education system, so that education will build these competencies and knowledge that pharmacists will need to be a clinician. And also public health issues will be very important. I think that many services in the, in the community pharmacies will be um, uh, based uh, upon public health needs. So many services, public health services will be present in, in pharmacy. In many country in Europe, even today, pharmacies can do vaccination. In Lithuania, it is not possible. In Serbia, it is not possible. But in the future, it would be possible because pharmacies would have competency and it is proven to be cost effective in a country where it is possible. So I think it's a future. Also, uh, something a public health intervention, public health services will be also the future for a pharmacist. So um, I would see that pharmacy will develop in two uh, directions, uh, in a more clinical direction and also meeting the public health needs because um, healthcare is expensive at the secondary and tertiary level. So it is a tendency to put all at the primary level what is possible. So to treat patient at primary level because it costs less than to hospitalize them at hospital, you know, and treat them at the hospital and also Self-medication is something that is crucial uh, for pharmacists to observe because people uh, take self-medication, they don't go to doctors, but they go to pharmacy. So pharmacists know what medication they take, what dietary supplements they take. Uh, do they, uh, can they combine these two? Because it is not possible to combine some 
uh, dietary supplements with some medication. But if you are buying medication, non-prescription medication at a supermarket and you are buying dietary supplements at the supermarket, no one can tell you that you cannot take these two uh, at the same time because of interaction. And some of, inter some of these interaction could be very dangerous for the, uh, for the health of this individual. So I think that um, uh, even dietary supplements and uh, medication, non-prescription and prescription should be only dispense at the pharmacy because there you have health professionals to advise you, to counsel you, what to combine, where to combine and so on. And um, for that matter, uh, I, uh, I know that in Lithuania uh, just recently they liberalized so many uh, non-prescription medicine could be purchased even outside the pharmacy. I think it would be um, a very uh, serious thing and uh, maybe some consequences out of that will be expected due to the patient safety and public health issue. Uh, because um, it is proven in many research that has been published that um, self-medication can bring a lot of problem if it is not monitored by the health professional. It is only in the hands of patient. Um, and uh, in that respect, I would always advise uh, that pharmacists take a much proactive role in uh, counseling patients, especially on, um, on uh, self-medication. So when a patient comes to a pharmacy, you should not just sell this panza medicine, but you should give a counsel um, and information. Also considering the therapy of that patient and um, to, after, the, after the examination, after the information exchange so that you know better of his or her condition. It is very important uh, to take some time when you can and when you assess that it is a patient that needs advice to counsel them. Um, it is um, uh, important for pharmacists never to forget that and also to find time to do it. Sometimes they don't have enough time, but as I said, if we would leave technical pharmacy technicians to do all the logistical works and we would concentrate on more clinical, then we'll have time to do counseling. And what is uh, also important, I think that um, interprofessional education is also a very uh, important for all healthcare professionals because uh, patients will go to one healthcare professional to another, then to the pharmacy to see one specialist, uh, GPs, so they go through the healthcare system and we need to take a holistic uh, you know treatment for that patient because he might say something to a pharmacist the other thing to a doctor then the other one to the specialist so no one has a complete picture and all the information so it's important to learn how to communicate it to interact uh, with interprofessional education uh, i know that in some countries they have interprofessional education uh, here in belgrade uh, uh, in belgrade in serbia at faculty of Pharmacy, we initiated interprofessional education at our University uh, of Belgrade so that doctors, future doctors, so medical students, dentistry students, nursing students, and pharmacy students sit together at the same class, at the same case study, so they have a simulated patient and they are discussing the case. Um, it is a pilot project and it is the outcome of the REFUS project, Erasmus project that we just finished and I think that um these are the very good results from the first pilot year. We are going to, to develop it further, to, to, to develop it and to run it every year. And I think it would be um, good for our education, not just for pharmacists' future, but for all health professionals. Um, and it is a model that uh, should be uh, also uh, encouraged to other European countries, I would say. Also, what I think is important for education of uh, young people is to teach them a good lessons and example from the past. So it's very good that here at Lithuania, Faculty of Pharmacy uh, teach students uh, about history of a profession. They have a chance to go to the museum for history of medicine and pharmacy and to learn 
uh, uh, to see the, the, the very well organized and uh, 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 important uh, exhibition and also pharmacohistorical and medical historical collection that they are preserving there. Um, to get in touch with uh, professional history is important um, to young people so that they can learn some lessons and also that they never forget that pharmacy profession is regulated with a very long uh, tradition and history. Um, also, as I said, it's important to teach them professionalism and I know that um, you have a graduation oath here when you when a student finish a faculty of pharmacy, there is a graduation oath, graduation ceremony and an oath for a pharmacist, which is a very good example. We are trying to establish it in Belgrade, it's faculty of pharmacy in Belgrade. I think it's important and also the FIP encourage uh, countries to have professional loads or graduation loads for our young colleagues because it is a promise for the whole life. Uh, as uh, doctors were on Hippocrates Code and Geneva uh, revision of Hippocrates Code, pharmacists have their own oaths and it's important to memorize the words and also um, in a situation when you have an ethical dilemma just to remember uh, the words of an oath that will uh, oblige you to accountable professionalism, to professional autonomy, uh, duty not to harm, duty to care, um, and also to do in best interests of patients. Sometimes it's hard in practice, really, because many ethical constraints and ethical situations you have that you need to think about. Sometimes you need a time to think about, and you don't have a time. You have to do uh, decision making very quickly. Sometimes patients are complicated and the communication is not good so you don't have all the information and you do things uh, by intuition, not by uh, reasoning and logical analyzing. But it's important and these oaths, the words are memorized somewhere uh, so that in, a, in this uh, problematic situation you can just as a flash uh, remember the words and say oh, it's a time I need to think about or I need to reconsider my decision uh, because of that patient and the best interest of that patient. As I said, the benefit of the patient, doing for the best interest and also uh, patient safety is something that is imperative for any profession. And if you would ask me what would be the crucial element of um, clinical practice or pharmaceutical care, I would say empathy empathy for the patient so we need to understand because each patient is different so for some patient i will need a consultation for four minutes and for the other i would just need two questions so uh, patients differ and their needs are different but they are all unique and the same uh, for the empathy they need uh, from a healthcare professional because it's their health it's their the condition and health is a uh, uh, social value that cannot be compared to any other value, human value. So all, each people cherish health, you know, and recognize it as a value. So uh, for healthcare professional, they should bear that in mind all the time. Uh, also, they need to be competent, they need to be skilled, they have a lot of expertise. But first of all, patients expect empathy and, uh, and some human touch, you know, to recognize them as a human, as an um, people in need um, and people, people always cherry for their health a lot. So that would be that. Mm -hmm. Professional pharmacists, uh, uh, the pharmacists who work at um, healthcare settings, uh, but also those who work in industry and the wholesalers, they are always a healthcare professionals because we train them to be healthcare professionals. So even if they not perform clinical duty, they have somewhere in the background that they are uh, providing some products or distribution of the products that will benefit the patient. So they should bear in mind uh, that um, all we do is for the benefiting the patient and meeting their needs in medication. Uh, so uh, professional pharmacy should be a well-trusted pharmacist, so the trust between the pharmacist and the patient is essential, but also the trust with the pharmacist and the healthcare provider, different healthcare providers. So uh, medical doctors should trust in our competencies uh, for dispensing, for 
prescribing for differentiation of medicine and also uh, our colleagues, um, health uh, pharmacy technicians, they must place a great trust in uh, ourselves and also we must trust them to do some things that we organize uh, for them to do or that we supervise them to do. Uh, so uh, trust is very important for the profession, professional autonomy, so we must be autonomous to do what's best for the patient. Sometimes it's difficult if you have a, if you have a and work in a pharmacy chain, a chain that is owned in, by a corporation, so you don't know who the owner, you never spoke to the, the owner. There are some corporation rules that might differ to what you are professional opinion. So professional autonomy should guarantee that you can perform with your professional opinion uh, either sometimes or in spite of the fact that sometimes they are in a collision with a um, uh, with a, a chain uh, rules or, uh, or ownership rules. Uh, also, uh, professional pharmacists should uh, uh, apply ethical rules all the time. So ethics is something that is important for the profession. And also professional uh, pharmacist or professionalism is uh, very much linked to the social uh, concern and uh, social obligations that we as a profession has to the society and also to the um, uh, scientific background of our knowledge and uh, knowledge and skills. So we must acquire a lot of knowledge. We have to be up to date. So we have to develop our knowledge. We must be open for new uh, challenges because uh, the practice is changing, society is changing, our patients are changing. Also their attitudes to health changes. So we must be open for these challenges to, uh, in order to, to overcome them, you know, to know how to deal with them because there will be many challenges uh, for pharmacy practice in the future. Uh, but. Um, the role of the pharmacy will be the same. I mean, we are the experts on medication and medicines, and uh, these expertise will be needed uh, for uh, the treatment of a patient, wherever you practice. So uh, maybe the practice will uh, differ from country to country, healthcare system differ to, from country to country, but the expertise and the knowledge should not differ because uh, the expertise is connected with the uh, um, pharmacotherapy and uh, medication and uh, that's the expert of pharmacy in any country.